Um, okay, anyway, so there's no one here this week. So instead of doing the long thing, talking about semantics and introducing variables, um, we're just going to talk about parsing strings. Um, and then that way uh, you can watch the video if you want, you'll see an explanation and, you know, otherwise there's just a string parser in the code and it doesn't really affect anything else. So um, th this is also kind of good because it's a simple feature to add. So it kind of show shows the process. So for this um, first thing, strings are constants. So we need to add a new case to constants and it contains a string and then get rid of that comment because it doesn't apply anymore. Um, and now we have a new type of value too, because uh, when you evaluate a string, you just get a string, right? You don't get any of these things that we already have. Um, but then other than that, all you really have to do is add to the parser. So how do we make a function that parses strings? Parser const. Um, so what we're going to want to do is we want to write a parser that you know, finds a string, actually returns a string. And then we just need to wrap that up in the string constant. So we'll do the same thing with this operator that we did last time. And now what do we do here? Well, a string starts with, um, with double quotes and ends with the double quotes. So we're going to go around this. Um, and so actually, we can use a combinator for this, which is a little bit cleaner. Whenever you have um, starting and ending, uh, like kind of surrounding uh, some other parser like parentheses or, or brackets or angle brackets, there's a combinator that you can use called between. Um, and so I'm actually maybe not going to write it this way. Let's write a parse string literal and then, or mm, parse string contents, why not? I don't have reference code for this because this isn't what we were planning on doing. So bear with me. Okay, and then we use between that and this is also the end. So the first one is what you want to be at the start. The second one is what you want to be at the end. Um, and then the third thing is what goes in the middle. So now we want to parse string contents, which is a parser that produces a string. All right, and so, so what do we have? We have any number. So we're going to use that many combinator again of, things that can go in a string. What can go in a string? Well, you can have any character that isn't a backslash, or you can have an escape character, with, which is a backslash followed by something special. So uh, for that, we'll put, um, is, is not one of a thing? I don't, I don't remember how this works. Uh, I think it is. I'm sharing my whole screen. OK, so here's how you write parsers when you don't know what you're doing. You go to the Parsec documentation. <laughs> or wait, actually, it was I searched Parsec and it was already coming up. So um, no, I think it's none of. None of. Okay, that sounds right. Okay. Um, sorry. So, so the other thing that it can't be is it can't be a double quote. It can't be a double quote. It can't be a backslash. It can be anything else. So we're going to have none of. I think it's like that. Um, and I'm actually going to put it in a list, even though it's the same, just because it's a little bit clearer. Okay. So it's not a double quote or a backslash. I can just check that none of has the type we think it has. Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, or it's a, a, a backslash followed by a, a valid escape character. So that's a backslash and then um let's just use one of and then enumerate the escape characters that we'll allow so we'll allow double quotes we'll allow backslashes um and then let's say we'll allow tabs and then you know it's easy to extend this list by just adding more um but just to keep it simple um and then that actually gets a little bit more complicated because here we don't actually want to return the literal character, right? For for a double quote, for a backslash, we do. But for a tab, we don't want to end up with you know the character T in the string. We want to end up with with a tab in the string. So we actually have to do a little bit more processing. And so instead of just putting this thing in parentheses here, we should really have oops, we should use a function that does this processing. So we should parse escape car, uh, and then we'll make this local because it's not used anywhere else. So parse escape car equals. Um, 
do. And so we're going to get a character out of this, and then we have to process that character. Um, and so we've enumerated our cases already. It might be a double quote, in which case, um, let's see, I can actually put a put the return up here, in which case we want to return a double quote. We can have a backslash, in which case we want to return a backslash, or we can have the character T, in which case we want to return a tab, right? Um, and so that should compile, except it says error. Oh, now it doesn't say error anymore. Um, OK, so that, that should actually work, right? That, oops, that should be it. So if we go to the terminal, let me just move that over to the center of the screen where I can see it. And we load that. Uh, we cannot see it. You can't see it. Am I not sharing the screen? Oh, maybe I shared Emacs instead of the screen. Could you not see the documentation when I opened that either? Uh, no, I don't. Well, I was yeah. like, I too, but. OK, so that's probably what happened. OK. Now can you see it? Yes. Yeah, OK. Except that's. Oh, I guess it says constants only. OK. So now we launch the REPL. And now we can try this. So if, oh, it doesn't like that. Unexpected double quote. The alternative. Ah, yes. Yeah. So up here, we have to add parse string, right? Is that right? That looks right. OK. Now we try that again. Oh, come on. So quit, reload, launch the REPL. Oh, uh, ah, yeah. OK, see? So we're seeing. We keep forgetting things. OK, so that, that was enough for parsing them. But we still have to actually add them to the language. So how do we type check a string? Well, its type is just string. Um, how do we evaluate a string? I'm actually going to clean this up a little bit as well, just while we're here today, I guess. Uh, this is a string val. And then that should be it, right? Yeah, the rest of this doesn't affect the REPL. OK, so we do the same thing. Reload, launch it. Now, yeah, OK, so now we get a string val and its type is string. So this is what we want. Um, so I guess this is all we're implementing today. Um, but just while we're here, we can do a couple of cleanup things that will make life easier uh, in the future. So let's see. This is already fine. OK, so here. One thing that we that we don't really like is that we have all of these cases hard coded directly into this function. This function is going to get quite a bit larger uh, as we go, as we add more things that we need to type check. Um, and so really, we'd rather factor this out. And so we want a type of, actually, let's use lowercase o. Um, we want a type of function that just takes a constant and tells you what its type is. And so uh, this is you know, the same cases as what's immediately above, but um, in a factored out function. So float const is float. Um, bool const is bool. Uh, let's actually do string first. String. Um, and then I think I didn't talk about this when I wrote it the first time, but even though the unit constructor has no arguments, oh, hey, these are tie consts. No. Even though the, the unit const constructor has no arguments, you can still use the curly brace uh, syntax. Um, and so I'm just using it for uniformity. And this looks bad because things aren't aligned, but Emacs is cool. So now I go over here and I highlight the whole thing and now it's aligned. And then we come back here and we get rid of all of that and not that. And then we replace this with type of C and now it's a little bit more manageable. So that was one cleanup. And then the other thing was here. Um, for some reason, I wrote this as five 
different const x patterns. And I think I did that because I was planning on explaining that this is bad and you can use case of instead. And then I kind of, kind of ran out of time. So this is bad and you can use case of instead. So what you should do is the same thing that we used to have for the type checking, which is case C of, and then you would um, match these same cases. So I can just get rid of all of that. Oh. And then, yeah. And then I just have to do that a bunch of times. So this, oh, no, that's not what I want to do. OK, I thought that would just delete the matching parentheses, not everything around the parentheses said. Um, but yeah, so then, then you would just do this for every case. Um, not super interesting. Uh, actually, let me just fix the parentheses last. That's a little bit easier. OK. That one, get rid of that one, get rid of that one, and then, and then, and then clean up. Uh, ah, yeah, and then you have to change all of those equal signs to arrows because now we're using case. So if I do, what's the syntax for this? 111, 16, uh, percent slash, is that right? No, that's not right. Um, does it pass slash? Yeah, there we go. Okay. And then arrow. And then like that. Yeah. And then same thing. Align. Okay. So that's all of that. I think that's all the cleanup I wanted to do. Yeah, all of this is fine. Um, so this is a slightly better way to write this. You could do the same thing and factor this out into a separate function, like evaluate constant or something, but um the evaluate function, all of the cases are going to be a little bit messier, uh, unlike the type check function where like some of them will still be really simple. So what we'll mainly do is like put spaces between the definitions and that'll kind of keep it clean on its own. Um, whereas like in this case, this type of function is also going to get more complicated later. And we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, so it makes a little bit more sense to factor it out. But yeah, other than that, this is you know kind of the, the general idea for adding a new thing. Um, to the language, you figure out where where you need to put the parser, and then you figure out how to parse it. So in this case, you know, between double quotes, we have something that's not one of these, followed by maybe something that is one of them. Um, and then you add a type checking case, and then you add an evaluate case, and then you're done. So now we have we have this new feature in our language, and just for the purposes of showing that it still works because I did a bunch of stuff, but like, you know, everything we just did is exactly, work, works exactly the same as it worked before. So yeah, I guess that's it. Short, short video, 10 minutes. Um,